you're welcome to join us. But I have one thing that has nothing to do with the friends, well, they are friends, or Sterling Library or art or anything else. We have a very special day, either today or tomorrow. I got a little confused, but let's all raise a glass to Glenn and Lynn. I know at 41 years, it's hard to do. Glenn and Lynn are either today or tomorrow, they're 50 years. So congratulations, you guys. Here's our champagne glasses to you. Yay. Such a milestone, momentous occasion. But I do notice that no one sees Glenn. Did he make it to the 50th or did you kill him, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christine. Back to you, Julie. Okay, we're, we're, we're ready. Oh, that I was very know. thoughtful of you. We love you all. And um, I called him. He's in his office hiding. I don't know if he's oh, going to show up. Okay. Or not. <laughs> I'm oh, going to put up. Love a, you guys. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Happy anniversary. Okay, Christine. Okay. Um, well, let's see. I'm going to do this so that you can all see me. And um, that what I that picture that I have there is the reference photo that I'm using. We're gonna paint a beach scene and it's gonna be a lifeguard stand. And uh, just to mix it up, this one is from a picture I took on South Beach when I went down there one day. Um, it was really a rainy bad day and my husband wasn't able to work that day because he owns a roofing company. But anyway, um, so he wasn't working and we decided, hey, let's just go down to South Beach and see what's going on. And of course it was rainy, so it wasn't very crowded. And we took a bunch of really nice photos and I kind of like how this one came out. But as a photo by itself, it's a little boring. So what uh, I'm gonna do is we're gonna paint this version of it. Actually, I think I've got a better, I'm gonna run through my, uh, or my little choices here. I thought I had one where I had it on, the, there we go reference photo and painting side by side. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna look at this picture right here and paint this right here. And we're gonna start off with drawing it. Um, I'm going to uh, draw on regular paper. I've got my drawing already done on the watercolor paper, but what I'm gonna do is draw on some plain paper so that I can draw the lines uh, darker and you'll be able to see them really good uh, and let's see I think let me see which one of these goes better maybe I should leave it with the other one so the reference is a little bit larger what do you think any any preference on that you can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you want to uh, I I don't know. I'm thinking maybe the reference. I think a the larger bit. one. Yeah. yeah. Now I got to go. Okay. I got it first. First pick there. I got it right on the nose. Okay. So uh, I'm thinking maybe too, I can enlarge that reference a little bit. That's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to uh, draw. And I'm gonna remind you to use a pencil that is not gonna leave a whole lot of dark uh, pencil marks on your watercolor paper. Um, let's see if I can show you the difference here. See how, this is just regular drawing. This I've drawn very, very light so that I don't get a lot of graphite on the page because when it blends, when it mixes together with the, the um, watercolor paint, it, it muddies or, or darkens the, the watercolor paint, makes it kind of gray and, and a little bit ugly and we don't want that. So um, draw lightly on your watercolor paper. And if you don't already have your watercolor paper taped down to a board, or if you're not painting on a watercolor block, you will need to get your paper taped 
down and you might as well do that before you start drawing so that you don't draw part of your drawing on under the part of the paper that is going to get tape on it and um, I think I've showed you that enough times I'm not going to show you um, the taped down paper I am painting on a watercolor block today which means that all these all the pages are glued together in my um, in my pad and that helps it not <clears throat> not warp up when we're painting so um, let's get going on I think I'll draw on this piece this paper because this is this is going to be close to the size of a typical uh, piece of watercolor paper that would be like 9 by 12 or something. This is actually a little bit different than that, but it's very close. And uh, so what we're going to do is, first of all, we want to establish the um, horizon line. That would be this line here where the water meets the sky. And as you can see in the reference photo, it's it's not real distinct in order to make the painting come out looking uh, like this this really atmospheric kind of a day with all the raininess. Um, we're going to not make that real distinct, uh, maybe not even as much as I have it here in this painting, but um, you want to put that line across there and you can use a ruler for this if you want to. Just put your ruler lower than, like don't divide your paper right in half. That would be the wrong spot to put it. But if you put your paper, I mean, put your ruler, if you got a standard size ruler here, you can put that ruler right about at the halfway mark and then make your line on this underside. Or you can just um, gauge where you want your horizon line to be, just a little bit lower than, um, than half of the page. And just draw a line straight across. Now remember, draw it light, but I'm going to draw mine dark so you can see it. Uh, okay, now you need the line uh, that goes between the water and the sand. So that would be this line right here. And to do this line, you don't want to use a ruler because you don't want it quite straight. And you don't really want to, I mean, you could make it straight, but your resulting picture is, is going to be kind of boring. It's actually better if it doesn't get quite straight. So just go down a little bit um, from from your horizon line and just start making a line and don't worry about getting it really straight and when you get over to the right hand side angle your line down a little bit and that's going to just kind of help give the sense of that we're at the beach and there and you know it, it it just looks better to angle it down if you really um look at my reference photo, you'll see that it, it kind of does that too. So once we've got those two lines on there, now we're going to draw this box right here. That's the very next thing we're going to draw. And what to do that, we, we have to decide where do we want this lighthouse. And you need to think about how much of your page it's going to take up, where the legs are going to go, stuff like that. So like on this one, let me just see if I can, well, no, you need to see the whole paper so you can gauge the proportions correctly. Um, what I've got here is if you were to divide this into thirds this way, this takes up about that whole middle third. And then if you divide it in half this way, it's not taking up the whole thing, but, um, but it's just parked there just to the left of center and kind of this whole third of the page right here. So what you want to do is you're not going to draw a box that big. You're going to look at um, in the reference photo, or let me just leave this one out here because this is going to make it more clear too, I think, if you can see it in both of them. There's this uh, underneath the, the, the box part of the lifeguard hut or house or whatever we're calling it. Um, there's this white line here which is like the platform it's white and so we're going to start with drawing the house sitting on that platform but you can go ahead and mark off where your platform is going to be by just figuring like I said about left of center 
and that platform sits right on my uh, horizon line. So I'm going to make a little line up right there and then one up over here. And that starts out the size of my uh, lifeguard stand. And actually, if I don't, I think maybe I don't want it quite that far over. So I'm going to erase that. I forgot to find what I did with my good erasers. So hopefully I got one in here that's going to work. I'm going to adjust that over a little bit. Because looking at how it looks, I just think I would like it better over here a little more. And that means, uh, yeah, I'll leave it like that. So that's my size. Uh, now let's see here. I want to draw the, because it's sitting down on the horizon line. Um, let's see if I can show you. I don't have it right on here, but on, on the reference, um, I think you can probably see it good enough to see that that's, that's actually the bottom, the horizon line. We're just going to use that for the bottom of this platform. And also, I want to say to you that you can always, when you're making a painting, you can always simplify and change things and move things around, make them uh, that you think they look better or make them that it's easier for you to draw any of that kind of stuff you can do. So um, just put a little line straight across here. to connect those and then you've got your platform that your house is sitting on and then looking at the reference you can see that the the box that we're going to draw which again is let me point with something not my pencil because I don't want to confuse you uh, but I don't want to write on my paper here okay we're going to draw this box right here so right under in fact we'll leave off that top side of the box to start off with but we're going to draw this line here and then we we've already drawn what will be the bottom where it's sitting and then draw this line up here and you can look at the reference and see that that comes in to this side a little bit and it's going to go how for how high up it goes just eyeball it pretty close to about one third So your bottom of your um, lighthouse is going to be down here and the top will be up in here. So allow for the, for the legs and for the roof and figure that needs to be about that tall. And then on the other side, if you look, um, it comes in almost three times as far as it did on the other side. But rather than get all mathematical about it or any kind of thing like that just kind of gauge how far you can come in that's farther than this and doesn't make this too narrow so I'm gonna to go to about right there because that is farther than this not by a full three times but enough and just make that line straight up right there and that's really good and, and gonna work great for us for that now the roof kind of looks like it's a little bit slanted in the uh, reference photo. And in reality, it is a little, but for this painting, it's very atmospheric. We're going we're gonna to let the atmospheric quality of it and the bright green color we're going to put on there uh, be the, the, the catchy part of this and the focus of this. So we don't really need to worry a whole lot about perspective being exactly accurate. So we're going to make this line mostly straight. Maybe it'll go up just a little bit, but not very much. But what you do is in a line with uh, the outer edge of that white platform, go kind of straight up from there and in the vicinity of the top of your um, box that you drew for the lighthouse house part itself make a line over there and then just draw it um, actually one thing we should probably do before we get the whole way there we need a line that is this line that separates 
the this face of the house from this side face of the house over here. So let's put that line in. And if you're looking at the reference, you'll see that it is just to the right of center. So just to the right of, of center between these two, put another, put a little line right up there. I gotta remember to draw dark lines so you can see them. Okay, so having that line on there, that lets you also take note of, um, you may not can see it real obvious in the reference photo, um, but I think I made it a little more clear here. I put a little line right there. That's actually where the roof edge that goes with this side, this front facing, um, you know, we're kind of actually looking at this on an, we're looking straight at the corner of it. So we see this side and we see this side and this side's in shadow. <clears throat> so if you look at the reference photo, that would explain to you why this side is darker than this side, because the light, what light there was, was hitting over here. Um, and the, the corresponding roof edge that goes with this side doesn't line up with this line here. It's actually to the left of it a little bit. So we're going to just put a little tiny dot right there. You can't see it. Let me make it darker. Okay, so I've got a little dot right there. I'm going to just draw this line right straight and level right over to there. And then um, I need to put a dot out here for where I'm going to. And you can see that the roof line comes almost as far out as this edge of this platform. Maybe not quite all the way. So just go back in just a little tiny bit, not very much at all. Um, so it's it's not quite in a line straight up from the edge of the platform, just left of it just a little. And what you're going to do is connect this line to that dot. And if you want, you can angle it up just a little tiny bit, but I mean really only little. It would be kind of better if you just made it level. So if you're going to err to one side or the other, err towards making it too level rather than making it too uh, angled upward. And that is the bottom edge of the roof, um, what we actually call the fascia. It's the, you know, the front edge there of that roof. And then where we had that dot, just make a tiny little bitty line and keep that very light because we don't want to overemphasize that, that line that I just put in was right here. Now, um, I'm feeling like it would help you guys if I could zoom in on what I'm drawing, but to do that, it will either take me a minute to get the reference photo included in there, or else we don't have the reference photo and I just keep pulling my painting over in the picture. Is there a preference? Do I leave it as is, or would it help to zoom in? No one I has a real. I, I think, maybe, as as I think maybe leave it as it is so that you're not doing a yeah. lot with the camera. What does everybody else think? I agree. Okay, if everyone can see it good enough, we'll we'll go with it like it is. Okay. Um, and I see Lynn said keep the reference, so we will keep the reference in and go this way. Uh, okay. Now we need to put the top edge of the roof line in, and we're going to need an edge over on this side and an edge over on this side. And those are very tiny little lines. And these lines need to completely parallel these lines right here. No angling at all unless this line angles. So just draw them right like that. Now, if you've got any angle whatsoever to this half, you're gonna be able to put a little bit of a straight line from here to here and it'll show a little tiny bit in there um, which you can barely see in the reference photo you can if you wanted to see the the top uh, of the roof of this little building you can't see very much of it at all in this reference because of the perspective of where I was standing when I took the photo so you're not going to want to put a big you know a triangle on there another thing is the the lifeguard stands on South Beach at the time that I took this picture. They may have changed. I don't know because sometimes they do. Um, but the ones I took there didn't have a big roof. They had more of a, a flat 
like it, it was a roof that was um, okay. It's like this, but it's lifted up on one side. So this would be the roof and it's angled. So if you're looking at it in person, you're seeing it kind of like this angled. So, you know, the building is coming straight right here. Get this in here. The building was straight down this way, but with a, an angled thing on the top of it, flat and angled. So that's what we're trying to represent here. And in, and in order to do that, you might have just a tiny, tiny little bit of something up here. And it's so tiny that while I can draw it in with my pencil, it would be better not to draw it in. Just we'll put it in with our paint brushes when we start painting because it is really, really um, tiny. You can, you can see how little bit of space I've got there and to go ahead and draw that and then try to paint it in is um, it, it kind of it's counterproductive because you're going to have trouble painting right inside any little lines there and all that extra pencil lead is going to mess up your picture so this is an area where uh, you're going to need to to you know uh, put your put your uh, your your brave I can't think of the right analogy right now. I'm sorry, but you know, it's like a leap of faith, I guess. You're going to use your paintbrush to put that detail in rather than draw it in and get it just right and then paint it. We're going to have to uh, be bold and take the paintbrush and just put that little bit of a roof part on there. It's going to be look a whole lot better if you do it that way rather than try to draw it and then paint it in so trust me on that one and don't draw that line in but that's what that's how much when we get to painting that's how much uh roof you want to paint on there you'll see that when we when we start painting part but anyway okay so now we've got um we've got a lot of the house already on there now what we need to do <clears throat> is let's um let's start working on all these rails it looks a little bit hard in the reference photo and you might think it looks complicated right here but we're going to take it a piece at a time and it's going to be easy <clears throat> so first let's um let's put these rails on the top so we've got about a little lower than halfway up we've got a rail that starts right on the this corner line here and just goes straight out all the way out to uh in to the edge of the platform here so it's got to come all the way out to there and be in a line with that and we're not going to draw double lines and paint them in i want you to draw really light lines there which you're going to use your paintbrush to paint them in as a post so we're not going to draw what i'm talking about is we're not going to draw a rail that looks like this with a post coming down like that and going over. We're not drawing that. We're gonna draw that, and then we're gonna make that look like that with the paintbrush. Hopefully everyone is not seriously confused. <laughs> it's gonna be easy once we get started painting, but I just want you to know, don't put all those extra lines on there because it's way too much pencil lead on your paper. We, we don't want that on there. So just draw the one line out there. Then we've got a line that comes down, but it's not all the way out at the end. It starts back in a little bit. You'll see in the reference, the, um, the, the vertical posts, it's not going to be all the way at the end. It's, it's right back in here, one straight line down there. And then in between, um, in between this outer edge of the house and the uh, post out at the end of the platform, there's two more lines in there and it's pretty equally divided into thirds in this section. So just kind of put a line there and a line there. And now I want you to notice something important. These rails are painted to come all the way down into that white platform so they need to come down like that and this um 
inner this third of third or first depending how you look at it this one does not have a line that comes across right there so you're going to want to erase that little bit of a line right out of there so that's one solid panel going through there and i've erased too much so let me show you like this that's what i'm talking about I, I erased the line that was across here. We don't want a line there. But see how we've got one, two, three. We've divided that section into thirds. Now the other one is um, also divided into thirds, but it's they're not equally divided. So these are equally spaced. The next one, we want to um, make that a little bit different. So come in here, about a third draw that all the way down into the white thing and then instead of going over here to divide it equally just stay close to that uh, line you already made and make another one like that and then we need to extend this right down into there then we need the cross piece and the cross piece will not go through this panel right here so out here we draw this line out and that's kind of in the center uh, up and down way, wise, and it also extends out past this vertical post out to uh, e equal with the edge of the platform there. And then do the same thing on the other side of that panel. But this panel over here, it isn't really solid. Um, you can see it better on my painting how I didn't make it solid across there. I'm not sure what that is there, if it's a towel or something hanging over the rail. It doesn't really matter. It just is going to look better to not have uh, that line all the way across there because we don't want everything uh, matching. Uh, it, it's too, too much matching is not natural. It's not what it would look like. And so while we don't really know what that is, we can still uh, draw what we see and just have a little break in the line there. Then over on the other side of the house, we do the same thing. We start on this line here of the side of the house, draw this uh, top rail out there to somewhere, I think I might mine a little too far, but it's okay. Um, somewhere in the vicinity of this edge here, then you're gonna wanna make your uh, vertical. It comes down not all the way out to the end, it's back in a little bit, and make the line come down into the white platform area and then extend this line right down into the platform area because there is a post there we will paint and that's all of the top rails done now there's a couple of things on the side of the house which again we don't really know what they are i think they're those signs that tell you the meaning of the flags and the meaning of the caution this and caution that and all that extra stuff that they put out there so just make a little bit of a rectangle right there and make a bigger one over on this side and then make a little teeny tiny one there and then they've got something either hanging on the side of the house or painted on the side i don't know which it is you can assume it's a surfboard hanging on the side of the uh of the lifeguard stand or or uh, one of those little boogie boards or rescue boards something you know, like that or you can assume it's something painted on there either way it doesn't matter we're going to paint it the same way so starting down in here just make a kind of a um a shape that looks enough like what's out there to resemble that on um, i didn't draw it dark enough i didn't draw any of these dark enough did i this goes here this goes here this box is here and then this there okay now we need um we've got a little bit more detail to put on there but let's go ahead and start working on the bottom part where we're going to draw um let's start with this box right here because it's going to be easiest to place that in and then put the rest of the stuff in there so on the reference photo you'll see that large uh, bright green thing starts over here at this edge where the uh, white platform 
started, but it's down a little bit about the width of maybe of the platform. So skip a little bit down, put it here, and don't go all the way down to your sand area. Leave a gap there and then draw that, start that over toward the right hand side and it goes over into um, about the middle of the the shaded side of the lifeguard stand close to the middle of there is where it goes to and then that line goes down right there and then you can draw this straight across the bottom there so you've got a long rectangle underneath your lighthouse I mean light lifeguard uh, platform and then you're going to put a little bit of line right up underneath here to connect it to the platform so that it looks like it's sitting on there and then you can't really see it good in the reference but um but i can see it in in uh my printed out version of the thing there's a little bit of a line right here where again we've got something kind of along the line same similar as what we had on the roof line up here this is the part that's facing this side of the house and this side is facing over here the same direction so again we're looking at the corner so just um, put a little line right in there you can put it in a line with uh, that one you put on your roof if you want to might uh, help enhance any kind of a um, perspective maybe but also it doesn't hurt if you put it farther over it, it's not gonna make much of a difference at all now um, we're going to go over to this outer edge here and you can see there are three poles uh, out to the right hand side start with putting drawing in that first pole and it's kind of uh, it's back in underneath a little bit of a distance and you can just make it in a line with uh, this vertical pole you have uh, on your railings draw it right straight down and don't draw it all the way to the sand but um well actually this is mm, this is the sand yes do draw it all the way to the sand sorry confused myself there for a second uh, so draw that all the way down into the sand and it doesn't need to be far down in just get it all the way down to the sand that is your outer pole there then we need another one and another one but I want you to draw those very lightly to start off with because we're going to erase part of them but just one two three and they all happen to the right of that uh, solid panel that solid green panel so what I'm saying is here's our solid green panel uh, these these poles happen uh, to the right of that so you've got those three drawn right down into there then we need a pole that comes right down from the edge of this uh, rectangle and bring that right down in now these will not all um, if you look in the reference photo they don't all come exactly to the same spot but because of the place I was standing when I took the photo they're very close to the same spot so just make sure these lines are not longer than this line and you're good to go if this one's a little tiny bit longer that's fine Christine, okay so we me for a minute mm -hmm. um, there was somebody um, is there is this a good speed if I can hear from a few of you I don't know if, if Christine going too fast just about right um, I want to go it's with the majority fast. of the group. It's a little too fast for me. I, I... Okay, it's, that's one person. It's... Okay, anybody else have anything? Is it going, um, are we at a good pace for everybody else? Okay, others are saying good, so. Um, okay, good. It's, it's okay. Okay, sorry, just wanted to get a feel with everybody. The, okay. point of, the point of going as quickly as I am, I'm trying to make sure we have time to finish the painting. Um, but, uh, but we do need a good drawing, so we can slow down a little bit if we need to, but it's okay. I, I mean, we I just need to try to keep going. I'm, I'm pushing a little here for that reason, so we can finish the drawing and get to the painting part. Okay. I don't want to take up the time then. Let's we'll, okay. we'll go with how you're going. Okay. 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 So, um, 
now we have that's that's these three are put in place and this one is put there now you see this big x right here there's an x in the uh reference of lime green uh cross bars and what happens there is going from the top of this pole right here actually let's let's put this line in we've, we've got because we drew the top edge of this rectangle we've got the bottom edge of this underneath area done we need to extend that out here and let's bring that um, right over to that line right there then we're going to need to erase a little bit of the top of both of those two poles but keep the bottom edge of your platform drawn then what we're going to do is um, come down from there a little bit like um, the twice the width of uh, that white platform and then draw an angle uh, or diagonal line over to just above the bottom of, of this pole. So up a little ways and down a little ways here and just make a diagonal line connecting that. And then what we're going to do is when we paint, there's going to be um, a lime green area that comes off of this over here and comes down here. Now you really don't need to draw too much of that if you can keep from it because it makes it uh, messy to have all that pencil lead in there. But if you need it, go ahead and draw it. Then we've got from this corner down to over here on this pole, but not all the way down at the base, just kind of close. Make your line go down there and skip over that section in the middle because uh, you don't want the line to actually cross. I'm not sure you can see what I'm talking about, so let me hold that up here. We want it to look like this bar is crossing behind this bar. So then, um, and I'm not gonna draw the other line because as I said, we'll paint that in with our paint brushes. Now we have to extend a line up in here and it goes all the way from the top of this first pole at about the well just down a little ways about the width of the platform and we're going to put that on a different angle than this line we did because it needs to, to hit a little bit above over here so coming from here start angling in and then when you get in here you want to uh, like you're crossing behind there and put it a little bit higher so that what you get uh, is going to allow us, let's see if I can get that up here. We're going to have some brown going under up here, and then it's going to come out on top over here. And, uh, and, and it'll be a dark gray-brown color because it's in shadow because it's on the opposite side of the building from where we are now. The green ones are the ones facing us or closest to us, and the dark ones are the ones on the other side of the building, and they're in shadow. Um, but to get them angled in right, we need it to go like that. And also there's some steps in there, uh, the, the ramp or whatever to get up there to the platform. And without worrying exactly about what's what, just put that line like that. And then we can go back in there and draw, um, let's see, draw a little bit above there, draw another line doing the same sort of thing going up in that vicinity. And then we've got yet another one going up in there. So you have a series of three lines. This one starting over here, one, and then two, and then three. And then what we'll need is a couple of vertical lines again. We've got one that just goes somewhere in there. Put it like that. That's, uh, that's pretty good and you can put a little bit right there if you want. And then we've got another one way over here. This one comes down from a, uh, almost in a straight line with that left side of that green panel and just comes right down all the way into the sand area. And it's getting a little bit confusing right now, but once we start putting the different color on it, it's gonna pop back out into being clear. So, uh, and that part's done. 
Now underneath here, we've got some little legs coming out under here. And what it's easiest to start with, the one all the way on the left, that's a large post. And it's in a line about with the, um, the left side of the building up above there. So not all the way out here on this edge, but in back in here, put a post right there. And it comes all the way down as far as this one does. And then we've got some diagonals going from that one. But before we do that, there's going to be a post coming down in the vicinity of where you've got this line. It's um, like the back corner back there somewhere. So we're just going to make a little post line back in there somewhere. And I'm not going to make mine exactly uh, lined up with it because it will just, it will make it actually more confusing. So we put that down. Now we need some diagonals and we're going to need a diagonal that goes from here right up to the center. So a little bit above, like in the line where that is, over to the center of this section here. And then from a little bit above the bottom there, make that go right up to that same spot. Then we need a, a one that goes angled more like that. And then we've got a couple more angles to put in back here. And let's see, let's, let's make this one go kind of like up to the top of that. And then we can um, kind of fudge that one over there a little bit more. Then we've got some of these brown come down in here and then go straight down and back over. And that's kind of the base of the ramp. And then we have to have something coming up from here. Uh, so let's put this one coming up in that same vicinity and this one coming up here. And it's kind of a lot of lines, but once we get the color on them, it, it's going to look good. You're going to see that it, it works good. And uh, I see we forgot the crossbar right in here, the, the, like the lower rail on that side. And that's all of our drawing completed. So you should have something with that looks like that. And now we can take a little drink of water break. Actually, let's do one more little detail thing. We're going to put a couple of little triangles in. There are some metal brackets that hold the, the doors and the uh, the window things, window panels of this building when the doors and windows are open. They've got these metal brackets that they use for that. So to get that in, um, we want to put a little a sideways triangle right here. See that triangle? And put another one up here, like a skinny triangle over on its side. And then if you just draw a very, very faint line right down in there somewhere, uh, let me draw it dark so you can see that's where I'm talking about, right here. But don't draw it dark, keep it very faint, and then Put a line over that way, also very faint. I just drew it way too dark. You, you, you don't want to see it very much at all. That's just so you can see the placement. Now you're going to put a short triangle right there and a little ball underneath of it. Let's see if I can put that up here so you can see what I did. So I've got a short triangle right there and a little ball on right underneath of it. That is going to be what we paint that will resemble hinges on uh, some kind of a panel that drops down or goes up. I'm not sure which it does on this one. But anyway, that's what you want. Just make sure this line and this line are extremely light. You don't want a really um, heavy line right there at all. And then all of the drawings done. So I am going to get a drink of water. And if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Any questions? I see um, looking back in the chat. Um, 
Suzanne asked about um, paint and Jackie told her red, blue, and yellow. We're going to mostly use blues and yellows and greens, but there is a little tiny bit of a red in there uh, when we make the create the brown. If you've got an actual brown like burnt sienna or something like that, we'll use that. Uh, someone asked about a list of supplies. It's just watercolor paints and uh, watercolor paper. If you don't have that and you're using pencils, uh, that you can color this drawing we just made with pencils or markers uh, using whatever colors uh, are, are close to what we have here or, or use whatever you have. We are at 155, Christine. Okay, let's start painting. There's my watercolor paper. Drawings back there. And um, I've got my I've got my whole pile of brushes, <laughs> uh, but we're going to just use a, a flat. So if you've got flats or flat angled brushes in a couple different sizes and a round brush or two, uh, these will be optimum. See, I think I'll switch for a smaller one there. So those are, this is a good range of, range of brushes to have. A couple of smallish rounds, one at least with a really good point or tip on it, and a couple of flats in, in a bigger and littler are the sizes. I don't want you to feel like you can't do this because you don't have a one inch flat and a half inch flat. Don't, don't think of it that way. Think of it as you've got a bigger one and a littler one and a couple of good rounds. Then we need um, paper towels and a water container. Let's see, I've got to switch to this screen. So I've got my water container here and I've got my paint palette. And this paint palette is covered with dried paint. Um, don't let that scare you. Uh, Let's see, we're not going to use nearly a, a much red as what I've got on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean all this red off here. We won't need it, so it's not going to stay there and be confusing. These other colors are mainly just, I've got a little bit of my ultramarine blue, which is just a normal blue. And then I've got uh, some Windsor violet, which is just your normal blue violet. And I mixed a little bit of it in there, but this is, it's all dry. So uh, I don't have a whole bunch of paint already mixed, ready to go here. We're gonna make this up as we go. I just uh, don't clean my palette because I can use that paint. All right, so what we first wanna do is with your larger flat brush, we're going to actually uh, put water all over everything except where it's where it's white here and mostly this uh, this bright green we don't really want to get the blue on those it's not going to hurt anything if it gets on there but where it's white here and where this white platform is we want to try not to put uh, blue paint on that so we're going to put water all over this and being that it's nice straight edges it's going to be easy enough to paint around it rather than to try to tape it or mask it out um, we're going to paint right over this area where the, all these um, legs go because we can paint those colors over top of the light uh, water there we're going to stop our water right at the line where this sand is because we don't want the water bleeding down into the sand area so we're going to get all that area that's blue in there wet with clean water right now so go ahead and get your paper um, painted with water and 
and don't forget stop at the sand don't paint the sand and don't paint this white platform in here paint around that so I'm going to go right up under there and straight down to where the sand is and I'm avoiding painting on that little bit of white platform that's sticking out there and I'm not painting on the building and I'm not going to paint that roof with this water paint all around all of those things and just get your paper good and wet Now on this side, I'm going to avoid painting um, my big green rectangle there just because the color will stay brighter and prettier if I don't get the blue on that. And I'm going to not paint the white platform there, but there is a little tiny bit of a part that sticks in right there. Right in there, there's that little tiny bit of blue that you can see between this green base of the uh, the deck or whatever that is and the white platform there right in between there's a little bit of blue so don't forget that when you're putting your blue in and I'm going to paint right up this side of the building and paint around that roof right there and I've got my paper all wet Now I'm going to stick my brush into one of my lighter blues. Uh, this one is called, um, shoot, I forgot what it's called. It's got a weird name, but it's like a sky blue color. So I've just got this sky blue color here. So anything that you've got that's close to sky blue, get a little puddle of that going on your palette or your paper plate or a plastic plate, whatever it is you're using. And then we're going to get a little bit of a darker blue and put it in there. And for that, I'm using an ultramarine blue. So I've just got a, a lighter side and a darker side of my puddle going here. I'm going to get some more of that sky blue color. It's got a little tiny bit of a grayness to it. So um, to, to get that color happening, I want you to take your brush, which is damp with paint. Don't rinse it out. Just drag it across your purple. If your purple is uh, dry in your palette like mine is, it might take a couple of drags. If it's really wet, just dip it and get the least little bit of that purple going. Plop it down beside the, the puddle of the blue that you have there. Mix it with what you've already got in your paintbrush, and then you can drag those together a little bit, and you've darkened that uh, blue into a really nice color that resembles the clouds that you've got running right through the middle of the, the sky back there. Okay, so now just above the horizon line, I'm going to start putting that dark color in there. And my paper's wet, so my paint's going to um, move around on the paper a little bit there. And if I notice that the paper's too dry, just I put my brush back in the water and um, I add some more water right on the edge of that so that I don't get any hard edges happening. Paint right up under the roof of that uh, little building there with the, with the wa way watered down color. Get some more of that and put it on the opposite side so that you've got the dark color kind of passing through the sky back behind the building. And then I think I will lack a little bit more dark color into it. So I just touched my, my brush to my purple and went right straight onto my paper. And I'm just gonna brush that purple into the, to the blue that I've got there. And then as I work it out of my brush. 
uh, I'm going to actually rinse the brush just a little, touch it on the paper towel, and then just kind of move that paint up the page a little bit. And then I'm going to get some of the lighter uh, blue color that I mixed and um, put that in right up above there. And if you leave some little bits of white showing, that is fine because that might be a little bit of a cloud. And as long as your paper is good and wet, you can move your paint around back and forth in there and get these nice um, smooth transitions of color. But when your paper starts drying, that's when you start getting an ugly appearance and your paper will peel and everything. So uh, to keep the soft transitions happening, uh, keep your paper wet. And if it's not wet, get more water on your brush and uh, get it wet. And you're just creating a sky that resembles the sky that's in the reference photo there with soft edges down in the bottom where it's going into the water. And then I'm going to put a real watery mix right up at the top there and I'm going to add a little bit of a my Florida blue color because this is, even though it's a cloudy day, it's still in Florida. It's in Miami, so it's got to have that Miami color going in it. But leave some, some darker spots and some lighter spots because it looks prettier when you've got some, um, some contrast going there. And then once you've got your sky on there, go ahead and darken your blue. Well, I take it back. We're not going to darken the blue. Here we're going to uh, uh, lighten the blue considerably and put a little tiny bit of green into it. I've got a cobalt turquoise color that I really like. It's a very bright, pretty teal color. But you can also do this by mixing some uh, green into your blue and then add enough water that it stays very light not dark and uh, we're going to put that in right along the the top edge of the sand so I'm going to come right back up underneath the lighthouse building and put this color in right at the edge of the sand And then uh, while, while it's still wet, before it has a chance to dry, get more water on the brush, take the, the major excess out, and with a lot of extra water, well, just rinse the color out of your brush. And with that extra water in your brush, or the really watered down paint, bring that up into your horizon area. You don't want to have so much water that you create uh, cauliflowers or, or blooms, as they're called. So keep rubbing it with your brush. If you get those in there, use your brush to wipe those back out while it's still wet enough to do that. And bring it right up to the horizon there. And the the wet paint in your sky will bleed down into your water and that's perfect that's exactly what you want to have happen because you don't want a real distinct <coughs> excuse me <coughs> you don't want a real distinct uh water line or, or mark right across there <coughs> And if you see you need to darken it a little in some areas, you can do that. While it's still wet, you can work with it. Then you can, if you want, take a little bit of your dark. I like I see, I don't like what this edge is doing over here. So I'm just going to put some dark back in there. And it needs a little bit more of that purple color. 
going in there and I can make it that it does a, a nice um, indistinct edge there. Christine? Yes. Uh, Sarah is asking, I don't know why, but my water cup color paper is ripping as I'm working on it. Uh, too much pressure, most likely. Um, too much rubbing back and forth. Uh, maybe it's the type of watercolor paper. Um, give me a second here. Okay. Um, and that is Sarah. Give me just a second. I'm going to find Sarah's screen here. Hi. I'm trying to, I, I didn't know how to have a picture of myself on. Oh, you can't, you don't, do you have your um, video turned off? Um, I don't know. This is the first time I'm using my laptop. Okay. Um, across the bottom, when you move your cursor, things should pop up that says like mute and unmute, stop video, start video. Uh, it'll say participants in chat. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Click on start video. Okay. Here I am. Look, okay, now I gotta find you on my screen again. Like the, the paper is like, and I'm being very gentle, but could it be that the paper is yucky, not the paper? One I moment. Know, I don't know. It looks like you know, sand is on it or something. Oh, your paper's pilling. Yes. Too much rubbing back and forth. Do less rubbing back and forth on your uh, paper with your brush. Okay. And, and that'll uh, that will help. Okay, great. I'm going to have to do this all over from scratch, but I remember everything, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, well, and, yeah. and they'll be putting a recording of it up on okay, uh, on the okay. Friends uh, website or something. I'm not sure exactly how they do that. Yes, sterlinglibraryfriends.org. I think okay. that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jackie. Um, and if not by Sunday, um, by beginning of next week, if you go to that website, sterlinglibraryfriends.org, um, you there'll be a recording of today's class. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Thanks so much. I'll leave now. Okay, now rinse all that blue out of your brush because your sky uh, needs to dry. Your sky and water need to dry a, a lot. So rinse the blue out of your brush and using your same large flat brush, get a little bit of, this is burnt sienna. It's a very light brown. If you don't have uh, this for a light brown and you have to mix one, take one of your reds and mix a little bit of yellow into it and then a little tiny bit of green until you get a nice brown going. And then I want you to add a plenty of water, whether you've got the burnt sienna or light brown in your palette or you're mixing your own. Once you get your brown, add a whole lot of water into it. I mean, uh, a whole lot. So you've got a really, really runny, um, very pale little puddle of paint going there. Then get your brush loaded up with it and lay your brush on its side. I'm holding it like this and I'm going to lay it on its side and I'm going to just put it in right at that edge there. Then I'm going to just dip my brush back in the water and I'm going to paint with that like that was paint, that water that I just got on my brush. And if I leave some spots showing, you know, you can put your brush back on the side and kind of scrub at it like that. If some of the white shows through, that is fine. That's dry brushing and that technique uh, uh, allows some of the white to show through. It, it, it just, it looks good. Um, on your painting and I'm going to put I'm going to go back in then and put some darker color I added a little tiny bit of yellow to it and I'm just going to put some darker uh, color in a few spots to make it look like it's sand and then I'm going to rinse that out of my brush and while this is still plenty plenty wet I'm going to tip put just the tips of my uh, bristles into some uh, purple and I've got plenty of water added to that and I just kind of put it over in my blue puddle and I'm making a, a 
like a light lavender that's way too dark but you can see it better so it's purple add water knock a bunch of it off on the paper towel so this is not drippy at all just kind of damp with the purple paint and what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, make if you look in the reference you can see there's like some tracks of a vehicle or something so i'm going to just make some tracks go across here across the painting where a vehicle was maybe driving there and then it kind of went back this way so I've just got some very faint purple lines. You maybe can see them in my finished one a little bit better. Um, see very, very faint purple lines there indicating the tracks of some vehicle went across there. Now I'm going to mess with that just a little bit till I get it like I like it. And if the paper is getting too uh, dry and these, and it's too distinct of a line, you just get your brush wet again and go over it with the damp brush not a dripping wet but a damp brush and and adjust that to get it where it's kind of where it looks good like like somebody just drove across there in some kind of a uh, vehicle that the lifeguards would have and if you want you can put a few other little bits of purple out here for some um for some shade or shadow areas in the sand. But remember, this is a very atmospheric kind of a thing we're doing here, and there's not gonna be a whole lot of that stuff showing because the sun was really weird this day and not making the typical uh, shadows. Okay, now, um, while that's all drying, I'm gonna pick up my smaller flat brush and I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. So, Going right in here, you can see where I've got a little bit of blue over in the lighthouse where I didn't want it. So I get the brush wet with water, just dry it on the, um, let me just show you. Okay, I got water on there. Now I'm gonna just dry most of it off on the paper towel, but it's still plenty damp. And I'm gonna tickle that little bit of paint up there. Now I'm not scrubbing my paper very hard. I'm just letting those brushes, bristles on this brush just kinda tickle that blue paint back up from there because I don't want my paper to pill. Um, the more expensive, better quality watercolor papers are, are made to allow for some of this scrubbing and lifting and stuff, uh, whereas the, the less expensive papers don't hold up to very much of that scrubbing. So get the best quality watercolor paper you can get and that will help you uh, have better results. But it can be done on uh, the Canson that we uh, typically paint with when we do the in-person classes. Uh, you can do some of this on there if you just uh, practice and, and learn how to just tickle the pigment back up off the surface of your picture, of your paper. So I got paint back out of where I don't want paint. And um, I think since I can, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of the paint out where the lime green posts are gonna go right here because they'll just look prettier if I can keep them not having the the darker blue underpainting so i'm lifting this is called a lifting technique and i'm just lifting a little bit of color back out because it'll be nice it to um it'll it'll give a nicer cleaner appearance to that light green paint I'm not getting a whole lot of color off, but that's okay. A little bit will help. Get a little bit right there. And that is, let's see, let's go back to the reference picture. I think that's pretty good, what, I, what I've got going on here. 
Now, um, we need to not touch all these areas. So if you we're going to continue painting, don't rest your hand on your wet paint area because it will um, make a little spot there and it won't have the smooth, pretty look. Uh, what we're going to do next is let's see, let's, um, let's put that dark roof line on the top. Actually, no, let's not because the sky, your sky may not be dry. Let's do uh, that, that thing that might be a surfboard. We're going to put some red at the bottom. <coughs> so just put a little, oh, and you can switch to your round brush for this if you want to. So I'm just going to put a little round there. I mean, a little red there. Then I'm going to get the red out of the brush and get a little bit of a blue green. And you know, these are the colors that I see in the picture. You can pick whatever colors you want for this part. And then I think it has some yellow in the middle. So I'm going to get some nice pretty golden yellow color and fill in that center area there. And I'm barely touching my paper with the tips of the bristles to do this because I don't want to uh, scrub back and forth on the paper. That looks pretty good. I think I'll drop a little bit more of a darker red color in the tip end of it. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I like that a lot. Let me put that up close, see if the light will work so you can see that. Okay, that's what I did. And the light's not showing it as pretty as I can see it in person, but anyway, it's pretty nice. So you can see where we are. Now, um, I don't really need to even rinse that out of my brush. I can just put it in a spot over here where there's not much of anything going on and uh, adjust that color to, let me just drag some of this blue that I've got on my palette, drag that over in there and see how that darkens that brown. You maybe can't see it as good. I had the red on my brush and I just pulled some of this blue over into it and it darkened that and made a nice brown. Now, if I get a little bit of my burnt sienna here and add to it, it's a really pretty brown color. And I'm going to use that brown to just start touching in some of the details on the platform. And um, let's see, let me go back to that other screen where I think it shows. Yeah, this is a good one because the re reference is larger. Okay, so I'm going to touch in some of this brown color right up under the white uh, platform. So I don't want to paint the white platform. I'm going to paint the brown part underneath of it. And that goes all the way out to the end there. And then starts coming in an angled line back here over to that spot. And this is where we have brown coming out on the, the upper side of that pole there. So um, that's good for that for now. And then I want to darken it up even more with a little bit more blue paint in it. And it makes it go to a, a, a gray-brown color. And I'm going to use that to put a little shadow underneath my roof up here on the side of the building. So I put a little line and I'm going to come back with water and spread that a little bit. And I want to continue that right on over to this side of the building and bring it down a little further. And then here I'm going to go ahead and get a whole lot of water. I'm just going to rinse that paint out of my brush. Pretty much rinsed all the paint out. Now I just have water on here and I'm going to just sort of spread that down a little bit because I want that bottom edge to soften out and disappear. So I'm going to pull it down. Now um, 
it can come all the way down to the white platform and I'm going to get a little bit more of my lavender color and put it in there because it wasn't quite dark as I wanted it to be so that is much better getting that dark color going on there then I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow green just a little bit and just drag some across there because it it'll blend in and give it a, the right appearance now here's something right. 222 okay we got to paint really fast then if we're going to finish um, so get some um, let's get the the light green color you need to mix some yellow and some green and get a really bright bright green color mixed let's see this where I'm working I've got a very bright uh, lime green color going and for that you're going to put it in the roof up here then we're going to put it in this rectangle down here then we're going to put it in these poles now the way I'm painting these poles I've got my flat angle brush and I'm just touching the edge of the bristles to that and this is where I told you we would create these um, poles without trying to paint in the lines you just do just like that touching it on there and then you do these cross pieces and there's some green color underneath that uh, brown right there then we've got another piece that's green over here and we're going to put green right on that one but we're going we're to darken that some more and then we've got another coming up from this corner we've got another green one there now um, add some dark green or some blue or something dark to darken that color up and put it in that little area right in there that matches kind of with the brown on the other side that is green in there and then I'm gonna get a little bit of brown and just touch it into it in a couple of places I'm gonna to touch brown right onto that bar then we've got a brown bar right here and this can be a little bit brown down the edge then we've got brown back there in the back brown right there and we've got some more brown right in here and this is where you're just kind of uh, making those lines that you put in there have a bit of color on them and they're crisscrossing and you don't have to be too cautious that you're getting it exactly perfect now uh, mix some green into that and keep it very light on your brush and just dab a little bit onto those rectangle boxes and then wash that out of your brush and with the water on your brush spread that out maybe get a little bit of the light blue lavender and touch some of that in there because that'll give it a mottled appearance which is exactly what you want it to have now we need some uh, something close to a dark gray if you've got black in your palette you can this is where you can use it but lighten it way down and mix in some brown and some uh, blue and lavender so it's not too dark and then I have it on the edge of my brush and I'm going to just touch the top edge of that roof I'm just touching that in there so I'm not actually painting a wide stripe I don't want a big wide stripe up there just lightly touch that in there now uh, the last thing is a dark blue color 
if you've got a blue green, a dark blue green, I have phthalo blue and I'm going to just get some phthalo blue on my brush, mix it right into all these other blues that I already have on my palette. And I like that color, but I'm going to touch in a little bit of uh, my Windsor Violet, which is blue violet, purple color. And then with that nice dark color, I'm going to put in all those other rails. I'm going to start with these poles underneath here, though. So I've got a pole under there. And I've got a pole back in there. And I put these rails on. And again, the easiest way is to just touch the brush to the paper. And because some of my paper is still wet, it's running a little bit. And that actually makes something very pretty happening. I like that. And when you're doing this part, don't forget you've got a panel there that's supposed to be green. I didn't, oops, I already painted in the wrong spot. I'll have to clean that off. I left the wrong one unpainted. So, uh, let's see if I've got a different brush. I'm going to use a clean brush and lift that color back off there because that one was the panel that was supposed to be green. It's wet and it's running, but I'm going to, again, I'm going to just say uh, I like it like that call it my on purpose color. So I'm going to put a little of this green right in there. Now I'm going to take some extra yellow and brush it across the top of here. And some extra green and brush it across here. And I can touch a little bit of green onto this side. To darken that just a little bit and then with my brush using a sort of a lift technique with the paint on the brush I can clean up these crossbars and other things in here if, as much as I want to uh, let me zoom in here so I can show you I can just take my brush and go through here and kind of clean up the parts that are not supposed to have things going in front of them. And I can darken up the uh, brown a little bit. I think that might be a, a helpful thing to do. And also, I'm going to use this tiny brush here and a little bit of my darker color and put these little details in here where the hinges are. And that's too dark, so if I mash it with my thumb, it takes a little of the color out. I can also touch it with a damp brush, and that takes a little of the excess color off right there. And that is pretty much done. Christine, uh -huh. you did a great job. I'm just wondering, Mm -hmm. Next week, we're doing the blue, uh, not next week, I'm sorry, January 22nd, we're doing yes. the blue tang fish. Yes. Would we have a few minutes with the fish to like see how you would do some of the shadows underneath the, the beach? Um, oh, I forgot that part. That That's really quick. Sorry, I, I forgot that. I'm using my flat brush and I've got a, a purpley brown color. 
and I put that on its side right here and just kind of put it in like that. Then I get water on it and do it one more time with water. And that's the shadows. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I totally forgot the shadow. I'm glad you mentioned it. Anything else? Let me close up on this so you can see it. Good. There. Anything else? I'm, I'm looking comment. at it to see if there's anything else I forgot. I have a comment. I'm finding that we're spending a lot of time with the drawing, and then we, when we get to the painting, we're so rushed that I screw everything up. I throw too much water on, too much paint, and it doesn't come out. I'm wondering if we could we get ahead of time maybe the uh, reference photos so we could do some of the sketching uh, ahead of class time. Yeah. Um, we have more time to, uh, you know, we could devote more time to the painting technique and slow that part of it down a little. I feel like by the time we get to the painting, we're always very rushed. Does anybody else feel like that? What what we can do is divide things up where we have a drawing class and then the next session we paint the thing we drew. We've done that before. Uh, this one um, I thought would be simple enough uh, to get through it, but maybe not. Uh, but I, I kind of like the idea if we're going to be doing drawing and painting that we draw one class and paint the next class. Mm -hmm. We did that with the sailboat and that worked or, real well. And that worked well. I like I think that if idea. it's a less if it's a less complicated, even though you think it's an easy drawing, it I don't think it really is an easy drawing. So if it's a less complicated drawing, we could spend more time on painting also. Or what just you can do painting. is draw draw the basic structure and just start painting like the background and add detail the next class. Right. So it, it dries, so you can do part painting if you have the time. I don't know if you can see with my sky, it's like it's got so many streaks of purple in it because I was rushing. You know, he said dip the purple and do it the blue, and I ended up with so much purple that it kind of looks funny. It just doesn't look good to me. What I could oh, suggest, cool. Jackie, oh, cool. yeah, Jackie's, I know she has a question, but what I could, or a comment, but what I would suggest is go to sterlingfriends.org. I don't know exactly when it will be posted, but my guess is Sunday or a little later, the recording of this will be posted and you can go through the whole process right. with Christine all over again. And Christine also has a site with um, this up on it as well. I do, I, on, on my YouTube channel, I put edited versions of these things on there. And I do have a couple other uh, uh, lifeguard beach scenes uh, just for some variety if you want to try that. And if but you guys do that, you can pause her, which makes a big difference too. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Or if you have a simpler lifeguard booth, <laughs> like just more of a shack. Well, Christine, I was going to ask if, uh, like what you did at Christmas time, what about sending out something that's a traceable image so that we have a basic concept of, of whatever the image is on the paper, and then we can firm up the drawing and then paint? Um, I, will, I would like to talk to you and Julie about that at the end of the class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, I can send out the the photo reference of the blue tang fish. I, I think I, I have that already, Christine, okay. and I can the, then- The I, problem with starting the drawing ahead of time is um, I, I will work on those, on run those photos. photos. Um, now I don't know why I'm all of a sudden echoing, but I will work on those photos before class and work to simplify it and, and get, uh, tweak the design a little. So if you've already started drawing from the reference photo, you may have a drawing that doesn't match what we're painting, which I don't really care if you don't care. No, um, I, I personally, but, I think that this is um, a class for everybody and we're all at different speeds and mm -hmm. advanced and beginners and we can't, it, it's not gonna work for everybody, but we can, we can tweak it so that yes. we meet in the middle for everybody. Yes. And I think if we could send out the reference 
um, ahead of time, at least they have an idea of what we're gonna be painting. Our supply list is always the same unless I email you differently. Um, so I, I think it's a good idea that we start at the same time on our projects instead of everybody trying to do it at their own speed because we're going to come into the class at all different paces. What I've what I've found if some people have gone ahead and started to draw and started to do stuff and they try to work ahead, they will get to a point where what I'm telling them doesn't match what they're what they've got on their paper and then we have to start going back and and uh, redoing and I'm talking too much with each individual and we unfortunately time constraints mean that we don't have the time to do that. So that's kind of why I don't like everyone to start drawing before the class. Yeah. I, maybe I kind of like the idea of drawing it one session and painting it the next. If, if it's going to be a little more, if it's going to be a complicated drawing like today, I thought today was a complicated drawing for, for me anyhow. And it okay. took me a long time. So okay. um, I don't know. I, I agree with you, Diane. And I was going to say another thing, but I know, Christine, you and I always disagree on this. Maybe leave some of that detail out. I mean, I mean, we, we do spend a lot of time on the drawing because we get a very detailed picture. I mean, that's just a suggestion. OK, uh, I, I got to tell you, I can't see any detail in this one. <laughs> You can't because you've been doing this for years, but I'll lay you money to show a hand. Probably everybody in the group thinks it's a lot yeah, of detail. detail, detail. Yeah, that's what takes so long is to get all that detail in. Yeah. Okay, we okay. can, uh, well, we can talk about that some more. Right. And for, for the next session, it's going to be mixed media. So we will uh, draw very minimal and then put a lot of paint on the paper and then we'll get markers and pens and stuff and do the drawing and the detailing uh, on our own pace, but together uh, for the blue tang fish. And I'll just be showing you stuff while you're working. So uh, next session should be really fun. Bring your markers, bring your gel pens, bring your color pencils, uh, but it'll have a quick base of paint, which we then what, draw on top what of. What kind of paint are we using? Watercolor. Water I'm, I'll be using watercolor. It's the kind of thing that if you want to use acrylics, you can do that. It will work. Uh, oils will not work uh, because they just won't dry quick enough to draw over top of them uh, in the time that we have. But, okay. Can can we see each other's paintings? I would love to see everybody's painting. I'm not showing mine. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> For those who are willing, I would like to see. Oh, that's nice, Jack. Nice Great jobs, really. They do look good. Oh my goodness. I like them. I like Mary Ann's. Yes. Oh, they're all beautiful. Wait, Suzanne, I missed yours. Okay. It's, it's nice. 40, so I want to wrap up, but before we leave, I, once again, I just want to remind you all to go to sterlingfriends.org and you can see this project with Christine all over again. Is it sterlinglibrary.org or sterlingfriends.org? I'm sorry, sterlinglibrary.org. Sterling, sterling library or sterling library friends? No, sterling, it's sterling, um, sterling, I'm sorry. Like this friends. is the right thing. <laughs> This time I'm saying it right. We have so many different addresses. Sterlingfriends.org. You typed it right. That's, that's, what, that, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, Sterlingfriends.org. Sorry about No library. library. Yeah. That's okay. If I could put a quick plug, go to my website, mchristinelandis.com, and you can find a lot of this same information, including all the where to find the uh, Sterling Friends links for this these classes, et cetera and okay. supplies list yep i i did post it correctly in the chat and now um before and now jackie's just posted it also again in the chat sterlingfriends.org and we do not have a class next week our next class is january 22nd okay and it'll have the same um meeting id and passcode right and oh, the same the meeting same? ID and passcode. The oh, it's the same all the time? Is it the same all the time? Unless I tell you otherwise, this is the meeting passcode, the meeting and passcode. Meeting ID 
is 876-8073-9273. And the passcode is 851441. Got it. Okay. That's Landis.org. you said? Mine is M Christine Landis .com. M? Yeah, because my first name's Mary, but okay. no one calls me Mary. So M Christine Landis .com. Okay. Thank you, Thank Christine. You. It was Thank really you. interesting. Thanks, I everyone. It was a great class. It was a great class. I'm staying on, but this is gonna wrap up the the lesson for today. Thanks everyone. And we'll see you in two weeks for the blue tang fish. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Judy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Can I ask Bye. one question? Just one question of Christine. Really Is, fast. Where's the difference between the ocean and the water uh, and sky? Was I supposed to make this darker or something? I just um, don't know. It's real fast. Put, I'm so sorry. If you put a mm, that purple is in the sky and it's like fog or mist or something till where it changes to the ocean. Okie dokie. So it was not a distinct line. Okay. Hi, Elaine. Hi. <laughs> I know you guys want us to Have sign off. Me? I'm going to sign off, but it's so nice to see friends. Hi. Hi, Mercedes. Yes, Susan, <laughs> Elaine, Christine. Thank you. Hi, Hi ladies. Thank you. Happy 50th birthday. Yeah, happy anniversary, yeah. Lynn. Happy Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you in two weeks. Bye, Amy. Bye. Bye, everybody. Anne, we have Anne is on. Just leave. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, just do, to, do you want me to stay, um, guys, or do you yeah, want me to go? Yeah, if you want to, if you can. Yeah. So um, anyway, I thought today was great. It was a little, it wasn't a split class. Like it was longer drawing than painting, mm -hmm. but it's okay. These are all trial and error and there's opportunities for them to see it again. So no worries about that. Um, but we can, we can just tweak this now going forward. Right. I, th I think so too, to be honest with you, Christine, I, I can feel you tense up when I say less detail, but you have to remember how long you've been doing this and how many people don't have the kind of experience you do. So they panic when you start into that. And I don't really know where you would want to have less detail, but I agree. I love, I love the two session one. I think if we're going to draw, I did two. Keep talking, I'll hear you, but I'm going to grab That's something okay. right over here. This, this one that I did, I real quick just sketched it out myself. This one I tried to follow along and I just, I just didn't, it, it, I bogged down in the drawing. Well, so I do think two, two sessions. What do you think? I, I thought yes. we were going to do two sessions with this one because it had a little bit of perspective. It had a lot more detail than we're used to. And, and I think, you know, I, I mean, we have to think Suzanne is brand new. Julie is an artist, but has never done watercolor. Barb is brand new. I know quite a few of them. Are. I, don't have uh, I, I think that for me, I personally love to, this was a perspective piece in my mind. And I love to learn. I'd love to learn that and more actually. Mm -hmm. um, but on this one, I think it, a two class um, would have been better. But, and also, but I want to say, um, if we did it in two sessions, I love detail. So it would have worked with the detail because we would have done two classes. So we'll just keep that in mind. Ah. That's right. And I think the I, other I thing you have to here. stop and think about is you can't make everybody happy. And I am exactly the opposite. If I want detail, I'll go to the beach and I'll take a photo of it. I, I like impressionistic stuff. So I think that's you've got not just beginners and people yeah. who are more advanced yeah. or people who are more used to watercolor or not, but you've also got people who want the detail and people who don't. So I think you kind of have yeah. to just try to go down the middle. That's a lot that, of detail. Oh, that's, that yeah. for me is detail. Yeah. <laughs> so to go from, from that uh, to, wait a second, I'm two hours. I'm, yeah, clicking well. and changing and whatnot to go from that to that uh 
there. Yeah. I, I that's, think <laughs> that's me cutting out the detail, which yeah, is why I'm, so good. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I did cut out the detail because when I normally yeah. paint, that's where is it? That's what yeah. I paint. So I guess what you have to think of is how this long is where we have to talk. And you guys tell me that you think this is too much detail and, and, it's and, not, and really it's not too much detail. It's going to take you guys too long to draw it. That, that's what I think it is. It's not too much detail by any stretch of the imagination. And maybe that's it is Bingo. I have this problem with Larry. I have to be very specific with what I say because he doesn't do generalities. It's not uh -huh. that that picture had too much detail. It doesn't, but maybe it had too much detail for two hours with people who are new. Yeah. I think being that make it, more sense. It wasn't detail. It was like the perspective of figuring out the the stairs behind and front and uh whatever. But I don't know. I, I loved it. I just think we just needed more time. That's all. I do too. That's what I think too. Well for future, that's a nice head on me, huh? <laughs> I gotta go. There we go. <laughs> now, um, for future, we can talk about stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of drawing there. I, what I was trying to do really was um, was x out all of that work on the stairs and all that, and and make it just be some very simple lines in the background. Where is it? So we didn't have to put. I mean, to me, these lines right here, we're way more, uh, get those in the right place. And yeah. um, well, what I liked is that people that are beginners can see that the simple square that you started with mm -hmm. in perspective with just the lines, how you can make it look 3D, you know, dimensional. Yeah. And I, I, I like that. I thought that was really good. I okay. think perspective is really important. But you know, Christine, when you really look at yours, in reality, we drew more than we painted. We actually drew more with the stairs and the railing and all that kind of stuff than we actually ended up painting, which I yeah. thought was interesting. I like it better how we painted than how we drew it. So, you know, maybe that's something to kind of... Yeah. Now, the blue tang fish to me doesn't seem like it'll be... Hawk. I mean, we could do that in one class, right? I mean, the that's going to be the... that's going to be an outline, and um, you know, about the traceable images. I do that for my paid classes. Um, I don't know. I have to think if there's a way I can come up with. Um, I've already been considering putting PDFs out there because uh, I can create a form that somebody sends me two dollars and I send them uh, PDFs of my images to paint along with my stuff on my YouTube channel. Um, well, and that was just an idea. Frankly, I think doing two classes is, I, I actually like that. I liked when we did the sailboat. I mean, and if people want to do something different, like you guys know, as a matter of fact, I brought it out with me in case I got, I, I drew along with you, but I began to get bogged down because it was two classes. So I just started doing a whole bunch of different ones. People can do other things too. I, I like show, the Show me yours again, that. because I was over in the other room grabbing my other reference photo when you oh, were which, this them is up. the one I tried to this is the one I tried to do with you with more detail. Sorry. Uh -huh. And then, and then I just sketched this one out and free free formed this one myself. Okay. That looks great. They, I think they both look great. And Two. that one looks, that one looks good. That's great. I mean, it could use a different coat, but anyway, I, I think that that's something people can do if they get bogged down. I mean, if they think it's too much, they can do something else. Or I, I like the two class idea, to be honest with you, on some things. I thought the sailboat, this could have been two classes. And some things I think we don't need two classes. On. We did the yeah. the tie dye letters, uh, the, the puffy letters for Christmas. We did that in two sessions. And uh, that was good. And that worked perfect. Um, Jackie, I had just had asked Christine if she could do two more classes in February. So Ooh. maybe we can pick one thing and do it in two sessions or something completely different that could be one and one. I don't know what, okay. if, what you have in mind. Well, February, I usually do some form of a Valentine card class because uh, that's easy and there really isn't much drawing at all for that. Um, when we would do it in the in-person classes, 
I gave everybody a piece of paper this size and we folded in half and tore it into two so you, everybody could do two cards. Um, and I just had a whole bunch of samples and showed everybody the samples and told them, uh, you know, jump in, do whatever you want to do. Pick one of my ideas, create your own, just do some fun thing. And if you have questions, I'm here to answer them. My, I'll send you my heart that I did because I think I've got them in 